Hey everybody, this is Innocent here and welcome to the second episode of the Redstone Advent Calendar. You probably won't understand what I say in this episode if you haven't seen the previous episodes of this series. So if you want to check them out, link for the playlist will be on the screen right now. In this episode, we'll take a look at the repeater and how blocks interact with redstone. So let's begin with the repeater. So in the previous episode, we've already seen that a repeater can be used to put a signal that's run out of signal strength back to full signal strength 15. But that's actually not everything the repeater does. The, at the other things we're going to take a look right now. The repeater also creates delay. If you place it, it's standardly set to one tick. You can click it and it will add one tick. So that means now it's on two ticks, three ticks, four ticks, and if you click it again, it goes back to one tick. One tick is exactly one millisecond. That means that a two tick repeater and two four tick repeaters create exactly one second delay. The repeater only transfers power into one direction. That means if you give input to the back, it will output it to the front. But if you give the input at the front, it won't pass through the repeater. The repeater can't give output or get output from the block it's standing on. The only places from where the repeater get imp can get input or output are these blocks. The last thing a repeater can do is something not everybody knows about. A repeater can be locked from the side. A locked repeater is kind of like a frozen repeater. That means if we give an input here, it will give the output on the other side. Now we can, I say, call this now, let's freeze it. Now it's frozen. And that means if we turn off the input, it will still give the output as long as the freezing thingy is on. Also, if the repeater is on delay, that means if you freeze it and unfreeze it, it will of course take a little while to turn off again. A repeater can't be frozen by redstone, but something pretty interesting is it can sort of be frozen by a comparator. So that means we can freeze it with the comparator, it won't display this bedrock thingy right here, but well, it is frozen, but I don't know if this is a bug or it, that it isn't displaying it or a feature, but uh, it's pretty interesting, I think, that the locking barrier isn't visible if you lock it with a comparator. How blocks interact with redstone seems pretty complicated, but it's basically pretty simple. There are two ways a block can be powered. Way one, it can be powered by a repeater or an input device. Way two, he can be powered by redstone dust. Now we're going to take a look at both of them in a little bit more detail. If a block is powered with a repeater, a lever, a comparator or any input device is basically the same. The block is just like full power, so that means you can place redstone underneath it, redstone on top of it, you can place redstone on the side of it, you can place a repeater on the side of it, you can place a uh, lamp or output device directly on the block so that means basically just everything touching the block is getting directly powered. Powering a block with redstone dust is a little bit more complicated. Redstone dust kind of semi powers the block. That means you can take output from all the sides with redstone lamp or, a, or whatever output device you're using. You can take output with repeater from all the sides or a comparator, but you can't take output with redstone dust. Doesn't matter from which side you're trying to get the output, you can't get it. So in conclusion, a block powered with redstone dust can give output to a repeater or any other output device and a block powered with a repeater can give output to everything. So well, that's it for day two. Thanks for watching everybody. This has been Yunusif and I'm going to see you tomorrow at day three.